Every morning on Caribbean coral reefs, diurnal reef fish come out of their coral homes and cruise the reef looking for sea anemones. But not just any sea anemone. These fish are looking for giant Caribbean sea anemones that house symbiotic cleaner shrimp that remove fish parasites and are critical for maintaining fish health. During the night, tiny parasites, isopods and flatworms, climb onto the bodies of reef fish and feast on blood and live tissue. Left alone, these parasites can infest gills, cause tissue damage, disease, and even kill reef fish. This symbiosis between sea anemones and cleaner shrimp basically serves as an underwater car wash of sorts. Fish swim up, cleaner fish thrash their antennae advertising that they are available to clean, the fish pose in response, and then the shrimp climbs on and removes harmful parasites off the fish. The major players in these symbioses are the corkscrew anemone Bartholomea annulata and the giant Caribbean anemone Condylactus gigantea. They host a diverse assemblage of crustacean symbionts such as Peterson's cleaner shrimp, the spotted cleaner shrimp, and the sexy shrimp, Thor amblinensis. Additionally, the corkscrew anemone hosts the snapping shrimp Alpheus armatus that actually protects the anemone from predatory fireworms. All in all, this is a very complex yet important multi-level symbiosis on coral reefs. So where does my research come in? Well, lots of people study reef fish and the corals that make up these amazing ecosystems, and with good reason. But I'm interested in these sea anemones and shrimps that play an important role behind the scenes. Specifically, I want to know how the symbiosis between the anemones and shrimp are maintained over large geographic distances. Because these animals are so different, their offspring or larvae have different dispersal potential. Some drift passively in the water column, while some may disperse actively through swimming. Because dispersal is difficult to measure directly, we use genetic tools to give us dispersal estimates. The farther the offspring disperse, the more gene flow there is between populations, and over time, these populations become more related genetically. We call this genetic connectivity, and studying this connectivity has become very important for marine conservation. These anemones and shrimp are species that are harvested for the ornamental aquarium trade in Florida and around the Caribbean. The bright coloration and symbiosis with anemones make them popular targets and some anemone species have already been over harvested. In fact, the giant Caribbean anemone just received no take status for the next three years in the Florida Keys, making it the first anemone to receive substantial protection in the Caribbean and Western Atlantic. By understanding the genetics of the shrimp and sea anemones, we can make more informed conservation decisions. And if the anemones and the shrimp are around, the fish have a much better chance at staying healthy. So how can you help? Well, it turns out that landlocked Ohio doesn't have coral reefs, unless you count the 300 million year old fossil reefs. The closest living reef is 1,200 miles away, so I am asking for $750 to help fund a one-week collecting trip to the Florida Keys. This project is part of my PhD research at The Ohio State University, and any additional funds will be put towards data analysis or future trips. Thank you for your time and investment in my project. I'm looking forward to sharing my findings with you all.